the idea of this was that this was to be an exhibition of work, but it was never to be seen other than in, the, in a Xerox book. Siegelob, in an interview, said that he would prefer it was called the photocopy book. Which, what do you think about Xerox? Well, I, it's a Xerox book. and I, it, I mean, it's always been called that, and we call it. I've never heard Seth ever call it the photocopy book. So uh, I was sort of paying the bills, and then uh, Seth had the ideas. And, and so the idea was to ask each artist, seven of them, to uh, do 25 pages. They would be Xerox bound in the book, and that was the piece. There were no, no, be, be, to be no drawings or anything. This wasn't like a catalog of work that was, this was the work. Were there regular conversations sitting down with them, thinking about the issues and the implications? Well, uh, Carl's this? piece, if you want to start on, on one, was yeah. um, he, Carl was in Rome. And he said, just take the sheet of paper, this was, and a one inch um, black square. On page one, put one. Page two, put two, and then that's it for 25. Yeah. But you chose top left, so. Like writing, I suppose. One always starts at the top. I never thought of that until just now. So we did that. So you, dr you dropped this square object on the surface of yeah. the photocopier? Just randomly, just. Randomly. But Barry, he, he, he asked, and he, what he did, he made a million dots. And on these 25 pages, well, you can see, but there are a million dots. Are you sure? I never, <laughs> I've taken his word for it for years. <laughs> I don't think. So you didn't actually count? No. Okay. It's like a spatial thing to me in a way, but uh, a million anything has got to have room. And if it's on a page, there's still room. There's 25 pages, there's a, you know. So it was sort of more or less the biggest conceivable number. At no, the no, point. not the biggest. I mean, there were billions. And sure. It was a massive number to behold. Well, to, to, to actually control mm -hmm. and hold it, to actually have it you know, in a finite form, yeah. Douglas is, um, yeah, he actually was my wife's teacher. Doug was the older person, the oldest of all these people. He was, he, he was making objects out of Formica, I do remember we used to have one in our bedroom in New York, and it was like a big Z-shaped thing. A uh, Mobius it, strip? It, yeah, it was something like that. The, the fact that it, it, it was a continuous, but it... it uh, so a point moving at one revolution per day on a horizontal axis around fixed point B. I mean, that's, that's amazing. I mean, that's, that's, oh, there's time in there, too, a day. You know, that's, that's extraordinary. Got it. Back in space to infinity. One inch ahead of the picture frame. Now we're moving out instead of back. Um, A and B represent points located one inch ahead of the picture frame. That's an odd way of putting it. One forgets how visual these things were. Now Joseph, had, uh, his idea actually was to have the photographs of the book being made. And I, I just said, Joseph, you can't do that. You're going to be like Charlie Chaplin in modern times going through the machinery. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> he, he, he laughed. So we have here a reference to photographs that don't exist. Did you end up taking any photographs of the process of making the book? No. Well, and he, here he's referencing the other artists in the project. He's yes, pointing well, each, each one is the composite of Saul's and Larry's and his own and which would, that makes sense, that's content. And this was 1968, that there was a company that had a machine that you could, they could put all their figures in this machine and it would come out bound. We found out to, to do this, this was the pricing of the book, in this machine was going to be like about between 15 and $20,000, which in 1968 was a, a hefty amount of money to publish a book. So what we did, we fudged it in a way and did each paper with Xerox and then offset. It's, it's printed as offset. So these are offsets of Xeroxes. Silhouette. Now Saul came a different. First of all, these pieces exist and are in somebody's collection. I don't know how they leaked out. Nobody, Seth doesn't know either. So here we have page numbers. Yeah, well see, this was, this was the beginning of series pieces. This was, this is like a proto wall drawing. See again, like the 
the wall drawing piece is the, the, the wall drawing is the piece, not the, the, not the instructions for it. The fact that he supposedly invented the word conceptual, I always thought it was very funny because he is the least conceptual of the, I mean, these are objects, <laughs> uh, paintings and wall drawings, but, and it's signed too, goodness. Is anything else here signed? No. Well, I mean, it's not really signed. It's, right. It's just, but it's a, signed, but. but so maybe it, it was thought of as its own work before even this project. I don't know, the 25, I don't think so. Morris, I mean, he was a really interesting artist, especially at this time when he was, you know, doing the minimalist stuff. I thought, I mean, incredible yeah. pieces. I mean, there was the theory that the, he was the only he was the only artist here who had a gallery that had a bookstall. He showed with Leah, and so we. I always joked that it was that's why it was here. I I have no idea what census makes out of this book. But what do we think it is? Well, I mean, it's a picture from the astronauts of the Earth. Do you think he was thinking about making a portrait of everything? No, I, I have no, I, I really, it's just a mystery. Now, this, is the, this is the interesting one. A rectangular removal from a Xeroxed uh, graph sheet in a proportion to the overall dimensions of the sheet. In effect, that's instructions for you to do something. And that, I always sort of date that as, as a really, a, a big thing for like, to go from non into non-object. I mean, this is truly a non-object. And so these are instructions for the person who gets the book to alter the page? I guess, or to think altering it. I mean, I don't know if you want to, why not? Lawrence Wiener is someone you've had a relationship with and a conversation with over the years. Oh yeah, yeah, we're close. Friends. Well, I mean, this is uh, to me like a, a, a to Falcom. I mean, it was like a seminal. Yeah, moment. to me it was.